Hello and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Pest Management Professional and Control Solutions, um, Taming the Social Media Monster, how, how to using social media to reach your customers and create new ones. I'm Rick Aldricks from North Coast Media publisher of Pest Management Magazine, and I'll be your event manager. Before we get started, I want to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded. You are currently in a listen-only mode. The recording will be available two weeks from today on our website. A link to the on-demand recording will also be emailed to you when it is available. At this time, I'd like to acquaint you with the ways in which you can participate in today's presentation. Please notice in the lower left-hand corner of your console that there is a Submit button. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Just type in the text box at the bottom left, then click Submit to place your question in the queue. Questions that were submitted during registration may be covered in this webinar. Some questions may also be answered in an upcoming issue of Pest Management Professional Magazine or in one of our e-newsletters. We strive to answer as many questions as possible. Finally, if you experience any technical difficulties during today's event, select Help to submit your issue, and Assistant Producer Bethany Chambers or myself will personally assist you. Now I'd like to turn today's event over to our moderator, Will Nepper. Thanks, Rick. Hello, I'm Will Nepper. I'm the Managing Editor for Pest Management Professional, aka PMP Magazine. And I just wanted to say we're happy once again to be hosting this webinar with our friends from Control Solutions, Inc. Um, before I turn things over to Marie Knox, the PCO Technical Manager for CSI, I just wanted to remind our webinar participants that, as Rick mentioned, this presentation will be followed by a Q&A session that we hope will answer any questions you might have for CSI about this presentation. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce Marie Knox. Thanks, Marie. Take it away. Thank you so much, both Rick and Will. I'm really excited and happy to be here again with you all. And good afternoon and good morning, depending on what time zone you're in right now. We are going to be talking about social media today. That is our topic, and I've titled this Taming the Social Media Monster. So to touch on the flow of today's webinar, I understand that we have a wide range of participants today with various amounts of experience in using social media for business, as well as social media for personal use. So today's webinar is going to begin with some discussion surrounding social media in general, followed by a brief explanation of some of the basic information everyone needs to know. Then we will dive into the meat of taming the social media monster, where I'll share the secrets, tips, and tricks to help you better manage your time, as well as make your social media marketing efforts more effective. So basically, I want to make sure everybody stays on with me today. There will be something for everybody of all levels, and I know that, that there's a bunch of different experience levels on our call today with us. So if the beginning is a little too elementary for you, please hang on because the latter half is going to be more in-depth, and I promise you'll be able to walk away with some interesting nuggets of information and hopefully learn something new. Lastly, we'll hear from our special guest, Ms. Erica Cardenas. She is our marketing coordinator for Control Solutions. Erica manages the day-to-day -day social media efforts for CSI and has some beneficial tips to share with all of us. So let's get started. What is social media? The definition, a term used to describe a variety of internet-based platforms that make it easy for groups, organizations, and individuals to converse and participate with each other online. If you think about it, it's not necessarily a new concept. We've been writing on each other's walls, if you will, long before Facebook was introduced. Cavemen wrote on the walls of caves to tell stories and share information. Now we are simply writing on each other's Facebook walls to convey very similar messages. 
When I decided to create this presentation, I based it on the responses I received when I spoke with numerous pest management professionals from around the country about using social media for business. I asked whether or not they use social media as a way to market their business and services. I received many yeses, as well as many noes to this question. Oftentimes, the noes were followed by a number of reasons of why they were not using social media. Some of the most common reasons shared by pest management professionals about why they're not using social media for their businesses were, I don't have time for that. I'm afraid of not doing it right. I tried it, but I didn't see a benefit. I tried it, but it just became too much to handle. I don't know anything about it. The favorite one was, that's for my kids. And don't I need to hire someone to do that? Based on those reasons, the social media monster would scare anyone away. The picture I would have in my mind would be of something that steals my time, is confusing, doesn't show a return on the time investment, and it's a potentially expensive way to reach customers. But the truth is it doesn't have to look this way and it doesn't have to be this way. What I found really interesting was that many of the explanations seem to resemble the same explanations anyone might give for not wanting to try something new. And changing the way we do something like changing from traditional print or phone book advertising, which has been the standard in our industry, to the newness, if you will, of using social media or another form of online marketing or advertising can seem like a difficult transition. If you think about it, though, change is inevitable. You experience change on a daily basis. And you may have thought it couldn't get any better than the first cell phone you ever purchased. Think back, think back to probably the early 90s when you, you bought a bag phone for your car. Um, but now think about it. Look at the phones that you have now. They're nearly tiny computers in the palm of your hand. So a little bit of food for thought. As with many endeavors in life, it really is what you make it. So if you make it complicated and confusing, it probably will be. However, there are secrets to taming the monster, and that's what today's webinar is all about. I'm going to share some secrets to help, making, or help make using social media to boost your business simple, less time consuming, and more about relationships than technology. My main hope is that we don't get hung up on the technology. I know that it changes rapidly, and I know that it can put some people off, but we still are truly focusing on the relationships that we build. And that's how we build strong customer bases um, and a strong rapport within our industry and our communities. The technology is simply a tool to help build those relationships. Now here's the basic section. So hang with me, everyone. Before we get to the secrets, we're going to cover some basics. Number one, you do not need to be an online marketing expert. I'm a prime example of that. Two, you can still use social media as a marketing tool even if you do not have a website, but you will eventually want to have one. You can start with something as simple as a blog and then expand it into a website later on. Now I mentioned a blog. Some people might wonder what is a blog. A blog is simply a collection of commentary posted on the Internet. There's different types of blogs including personal, corporate, political, podcast, photographic, and more. And many blogs allow readers to comment on the blogger's post, which can create a sense of community and encourage discussion. So in your mind you could just think of a blog as an online journal. And you can make daily entries or weekly entries or monthly, um, whatever you see fit. Remember, the limitations, the boundaries, and the rules are really what you make for yourself. So some basics about creating a blog. They're very easy to create. In fact, for fun, last week I created a WordPress blog 
with just my iPhone. So again, you don't need big fancy computers, desktops. You can do a lot from smartphones. And I actually um, created a, another blog last week in a matter of minutes from my iPhone. Now, if you do have a website, but you don't have a blog yet, it's time to make one. And here's the reason why. You can link your blog to your website, and say you blog or, or post some interesting information on that blog um, on you know, a weekly basis or a monthly basis or every other week, and if it's linked to your website, it's going to provide fresh, updated content for your site. And when I mention the word content, I just mean information. Um, and when your website receives fresh, updated content on a regular basis, it actually turns into better rankings in the search results. Now, we're not going to get into Google Analytics and get really deep today, but just know that if you created a website two years ago, but you've never touched it or changed it since then, you're more than likely not showing up in the first several pages of search results if somebody's, say, searching for pest control in Broward County. What you need to do is make sure that there are some updates going on on a regular basis with your website, and then that translates to better rankings in the search results. Okay, since we're just going to cover some more basics, I'll lead into Twitter. So what is Twitter? It's like a tiny version of a blog. It's a micro-blogging tool where users opt in to receive and send extremely brief content or tweets with others. I'm sure many of you have heard the term tweet and wondered what on earth that is if you're not on Twitter. So in simple terms, it's a way to share thoughts and ideas in 140 characters or less. So if you want to, if you're going to tweet, this is, how, this is just some simple definitions and how you use it. Um, and again, you can always refer to the different networks' websi websites and they all have how-to sections. Um, but if you want to tweet at somebody, you simply use the at symbol in your little message to them, followed by the Twitter handle or name of the user. So an example would be, if you want to tweet at me, if you have some Twitter accounts out there, um, my handle is Marie A. Knox, and it's up there on the screen. So feel free to tweet once the webinar is over or during the webinar, um, and let me know what you think. And when there's a topic that you're tweeting a lot about, and in this case it would, could be pest control, you can track all the posts made by creating what's called a hashtag, which that just looks like the number sign. So an example would be hashtag pest control. So if you were to tweet, you, um, you could say, you know, at Marie A. Knox, thanks for the social media webinar. We love hashtag pest control. Now, in a search of pest control in Twitter, you would, your tweet would show up as well as any other tweet that had hashtag pest control in it. It just links those individual messages into a much larger conversation that's going on online. All right, Facebook. Almost everybody has a Facebook page, whether you're a preteen, I actually think children probably have them now, um, all the way up to grandparents. Almost everybody I know and talk to is on Facebook. Um, so this is a really great target for you guys, um, especially to start out with social media. So Facebook's a very popular free social networking website that allows registered users to create profiles, upload photos and video, send messages, and keep in touch. Facebook is also being used by businesses to reach and interact with their friends and followers with what are called Facebook pages. A Facebook page is different from um, a personal wall or timeline, if you will. So what is a Facebook page? The pages are for businesses, organizations, and brands to share their stories and connect with people. So like the timelines for the personal pages, you can customize the business pages by adding apps, posting stories, hosting events, and more. And it's a way for you to engage and grow your audience by posting regularly. So people who like your page, this is the cool part, so definitely pay attention to this. 
people who like your page, like there's a little box that says like, and if I go to your Facebook page and like it, your updates are going to show up in my news feed. But get this, I've got three or 400 some odd friends, if you will, on Facebook. My friends are also going to see your updates in their news feed. So just by that one clicking of the like on your page, you just multiplied that effort by three to 400. Pretty neat stuff. So a few more getting started basics. If you haven't set up these accounts, you simply go to the websites, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, there's a whole bunch of them, and you just follow their instructions. It's very simple. You click Join or Sign Up Now or Create Page, and then you enter the information requested, and it's usually very fast and easy. Now once you've created some social media accounts for yourself or your business, you're now ready to join this great big giant conversation that is social media. So for today's webinar, we're going to focus on the point of using social media for business, and that is to engage and connect with your current and future customers. It is not a one-way conversation. That is the beauty of social media. When you post, you tweet, you share, etc., you want to participate in a conversation that's going on online. You're not just throwing information at people and hoping that they pay attention. That's what makes this so different from traditional you know, commercials or print advertising because your people, your audience, can actually comment back, which is really neat. So that's why I do encourage you to have a website, a blog, or at a minimum right now, a Facebook page for your business where you can post or share content to add to the conversation and refer your followers and fans to. We're going to look at an effective tweet or post versus an ineffective tweet or post in a moment. And one thing that I like to talk about um, as a little bit of an aside, cheap real estate. Domain names are great, inexpensive real estate. They're cheap real estate. Um, so if you have an idea, you see if the domain name is available. There are sites like GoDaddy.com or Fast Domain. Um, and by the way, if I mention anything on the webinar, different um, websites, different platforms, I'm not necessarily endorsing them. I just have some familiarity with them, and I'm happy you know, to share it with you guys. So. Um, sites like GoDaddy.com are fantastic places to check to see if your company name, maybe your personal name, or any name you're interested in using as a domain name, a web address, is available or already exists. So if your company is XYZ Pest Control and you don't have a website, you might want to go to, um, they just say GoDaddy.com, and type in XYZ Pest Control. And if it's available as a .com, I would just purchase it, and they're, they're relatively inexpensive. They can range from $3.99 you know, up to maybe $9.99. That's why I call it cheap real estate, because you're buying a little piece, your little spot on the web. All right, now we're going to get in the real meat. We've covered the basics, just so that everybody's on the same page and we all um, are speaking the same language. Now we're going to get into the meat of actually taming this social media monster. We're going to break down the secrets, tips, and tricks using the top three categories or reasons why some pest management professionals might not be using social media. The number one um, category to me was time. Second, experience or a feeling like you don't have enough experience for it. And the third was a question about cost. Money should always be brought up. Um, it shouldn't be a scary topic. And the good news here with social media is it can be virtually free for you. So we will touch on all three of these topics in the, the rest of the webinar, but we'll spend most of our time talking about time because that in general has been what has frightened many people away from trying to use social media in their marketing efforts. You don't need to be everywhere, but you do need to have a presence because things have been changing over time. Advertising has been changing. 
marketing has been changing and morphing. So you do need some sort of presence when it comes to social media. We're going to talk about some time wasters and how we can change it and change the way uh, we look at social media and the way we behave and how we perform in this forum to help not waste time. So the first time waster is not being where your people are. And when I say your people or your tribe or your audience, I'm referring to your target market. So you want to ask yourself, where are you? If you are doing some social media work right now, where are you spending your time online? And are your people there as well, or do you need to refocus? An example would be, say you want to use social media to market to business professionals. Well, you should probably be spending more of your time with LinkedIn um, and possibly Facebook. But if you're looking for single-family homeowners and you want to market pest control services um, or even apartment uh, renters, you have a wide age range there. You know, it could be the 18 to 25 group. It could be all the way, you know, all the way up to grandparents. So you'll want to look at the the networks, the social networks that serve that audience that you're trying to target. So in my opinion, that would probably be you'd spend more of your time on Facebook and Twitter. Secondly, you want to consider your content. Are you posting photos of insects for a Name This Bug contest? Then you might want to consider posting across multiple platforms and using hashtags. Like we mentioned the hashtag pest control a few slides back, you'll want to link together. You could even cre create your own hashtag. So if your company is XYZ Pest Control, you could have hashtag XYZ Pest Control and make sure that you add that hashtag to everything that you post because it will be connected in a much larger form online. The second time waster that I've encountered talking uh, to many business owners about social media is pointless posting. Are you building awareness for your brand, or are you just sharing information that doesn't necessarily lead your audience back to you? There are some elements to a successful or effective tweet or post, and here's a few of them. First, you want to make sure your message um, gets attention. So you want to tease your content to get people interested. And remember, if you're looking at Twitter, um, you only have 140 characters to do it. So you need to be to the point, but interesting enough that you get people to pay attention. Then you want to always give direction with a call to action. People ask me all the time, how do I drive more traffic to my website using social media? And it's basically, if you're just posting and posting and posting, but it's just a quote here or a cute picture of an insect there, but there's no, there's no direction given, then your audience doesn't necessarily know what to do. They see your post, but then they don't follow through with anything. So you want a call to action. You want to actually say, click this link, which might sound really simple, but it works. And then you want to you don't want to be a person who just posts and runs. And what I mean is, um, say you decide to set some time boundaries for yourself, and the first thing you do when you get in the office in the morning is you, you take 20 minutes to look at your social media accounts, and then you post something new for the day. Don't just turn away at that point. Stick around for about 10 minutes and see if you get some comments or responses to that post. Um, because that's how you actually you know, are going to really engage people. So don't post and run. You want to talk back and talk with uh, the people who are responding and commenting. So here's an effective tweet example. Now, shamelessly, I will use a tweet that I put out on Monday um, promoting the webinar. So if you see, there I am. Uh, actually, that's Snow White, and that's my, my little Twitter picture. Um, it says in the tweet, free webinar, get ready to tame the social media monster. Join me live with PMP Magazine Thursday. And then here's my call to action. Register here, and then there's a shortened link. 
So I made it very easy for my followers to just click on that shortened link, and it took you to the registration page. So the tweet here teases the content of the webinar. It states that it's free, and it gives that action of register here with a link. So you can use your posts and your tweets to direct people to your website, to new offers that might be posted on your website, to your blog posts to um, your services, to a coupon. This is how you engage them in the conversation, and you want them to click through. Another example, um, this is a company, one of the companies I follow. It happens to be Arizona Pest Control, so if anybody from the company is on, hi. Uh, I'm really proud of your tweets, and I think that a lot of them are very effective. And I pointed out the third one in the list here. Hopefully you guys can read it. If not, I'll read it to you. It says, what can a homeowner do to control ant infestations? And then it has a shortened link. So that's a nice, short, to the point tweet. If people search ant infestation um, or just ants in Twitter, then that keyword is there. Their tweet will probably come up. And it's, they're sharing just enough information to get some attention, and they're guiding you to click it. Um, I would like to see more of a click here to read more, but you know, I'm, just, I'm glad that they have the shortened link available. So I, I think they have some pretty effective tweets. So we talked about time waster number one, which was you want to be where your people are. And then time waster number two, to combat that, you want to make sure that your, your posts and your tweets have a point and give a direction. And then number three, gosh, spending all day online. Nobody wants to spend all day you know, taming social media, for goodness sakes. We don't want to feel like it's wasting our time. We want to feel like it's benefiting us and adding another layer to our, market, our marketing and our promotions. So we don't want to feel like we're, we're wasting our time. So how do you organize it, especially if you're handling multiple social media accounts? You use a dashboard or other online tool to organize your social media networks so you can be more efficient. Now, you also want to set some limits for yourself or some boundaries um, or for you, know, for you or for whomever is responsible, responsible for managing your social media efforts. And what I mean is, Give yourself those boundaries, those time slots to work on your social media. So maybe it's the first 20 minutes of the day in your office. You catch up on some comments from the previous day. You post something new. Then you stick around for 10 minutes, and you see if you get any responses, and then you leave it alone. And then at the end of the day, you could go on for 20 minutes and be strict you know, with the time frame. Um, and you can follow up with any comments from your, your post that morning, and you could post something else if you choose. But just using those boundaries and those parameters are important to help keep you from feeling like you're becoming overwhelmed. This is a quote from a social media guru online. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her. Her name is Christine Gallagher. And she likes to say, practice ninja time management. So that always makes me smile just to say the word ninja. But practicing ninja time management means you appear to be everywhere. But you know what? You don't have to be. Um, you just look like you're everywhere. And it's so impressive. I see these companies, and it's what I strive for, where they, just, they seem to be so active online that you wonder, how, gosh, how can I keep up? Well, the secret of being everywhere is using a platform such as Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a dashboard that allows you to link your networks and post across all of them at once so that you're not wasting time posting to each individual network. And the basic version is free and it's fantastic. I use it. I, I don't have the pro version. I use the free version. Um, just as a side note, I, I do get questions about cost all the time. I, almost everything I do social media-wise is free right now. So, and you can get an awful lot accomplished with all the free versions. 
So remember, when in doubt, you can search for helpful videos and instructions on how to use certain features of the various social media networks on their sites. Most networks offer assistance like this. There's a little screen grab on the side from Twitter, and they have classes for the art of the tweet. And then Hootsuite actually has a social media coach with videos. Facebook has similar videos. Um, and there's online tutorials connected to each of these sites. So let's get into Hootsuite a little bit more, because this is about time management. What you see on your screen is a shot of my laptop screen. This is the laptop or desktop version of Hootsuite. Now it looks pretty cluttered, and I did this on purpose because I wanted to open up five different streams to show you that you can look at everything on one screen if you want to. Now I don't always look at it like this because I like, I like it to be a little bit cleaner. But um, I have on the left, I have an Instagram feed that's for taking pictures and sharing you know, little messages about the pictures. Then you can see my Facebook wall posts. In the middle is my LinkedIn. Um, almost to the right, I think I have, oh, that's a web, that's the WordPress, the blog feed. And then on the very right is the Twitter feed. So you can see everything and catch up with it um, all in one place. And I'll actually go step by step and show you how you can tweet across these so that you're only doing something one time rather than five times. This is a shot of Hootsuite on my iPad. So I prefer to look at it like this. You actually see my streams <coughs> excuse me, down the left-hand side. So I can choose which feeds I want to see. Um, and then, again, in the previous picture, I had a lot of stuff showing, a lot of feeds showing, but I don't always look at it that way. So. Let's walk through posting using Hootsuite. I'm going to show you how I posted this tweet to Twitter and as an update to LinkedIn in a very short amount of time. Um, it took me less than a few minutes to, to post this tweet. And that is really the point of having this dashboard is you don't have to have five different windows open on your computer and you don't have to like keep typing in the same thing over and over. You just do it once and you choose where to deploy it to, and then Hootsuite does the rest. So the first step in posting, you know, you, you go to the web page that you wanted to create a link to. So like I mentioned before, I encourage you to have those action words in your tweets and in your posts and to have um, the, the link or a shortened version of the link readily available for your audience to just easily click on it. You don't want to make people hunt all over the place to find your content because you probably don't want to hunt all over the place to find content. I think you'll be more effective if you make it easy for your audience. So in order to do that tweet, first I visited the page that I wanted to create the link to in my post. And this is just a shot of the registration page for Taming the Social Media Monster. And it happens to be on my iPad. So I opened the little bookmarks tab, that little icon at the top of my iPad screen, and it opened up. And I clicked on Hootsuite Bookmarklet. And I'll explain what that is in a second. That bookmarklet that Hootsuite bookmarklet is very easy to install on your bookmarks bar in Safari on your iPad or on your desktop. So this is simply in Hootsuite on my iPad. You click on Settings, and it opens up this dropdown. And you just click Add Hootsuite to Safari and follow the directions, and it's done. Very, very simple. It's actually easier to install this little bookmarklet that's part of Hootsuite on your desktop or laptop. This is a shot of my laptop screen, uh, what, what it looks like in Hootsuite. And all I did was I went to Tools. It opened up that cute little Hootlet that you see in the large red circle. And I, you just drag that little owl to your bookmarks bar. And then it asks if you want to add it, and you click Yes. 
So that's what the bookmarklet is, and I'll show you what it does. So back to that original page that I wanted to create the link to, back to the registration page. What I did is I clicked the bookmarklet, and then a little message popped up that said, open this page in Hootsuite. And I clicked open, and then Hootsuite does all the rest. Hootsuite opened up basically all by itself, and it shortened the link to that page that I wanted to send out to all of you or to anybody who's following me on Twitter. So Hootsuite opened with the shortened link already in the message box. Now all I had to do was type in my message and the call to action, and that's what I did. Now. So this is the Compose message box. I just, as you can see, I typed in it. Now along the top of that little box, you'll see five little tiny pictures. That is where if I wanted to send that one single message to all five things, you just click on them and it, a little red check mark appears, and you deploy that message out to across those five social networks. It's very easy. So I happen to choose LinkedIn and Twitter, and the message was tweeted and posted at the exact same time. And the beauty, another beautiful part of Hootsuite or any of the, the dashboards out there to manage social media um, is that you can also schedule posts in advance if you wish. So you can schedule them to go out while you're on vacation. You can schedule them you know, to go out prior to a big holiday, whatever you want to do. Or if you have regularly scheduled blog posts, um, you can start scheduling messages um, based on your blog posts. There's a number of different ways to do it. So this is, the, this is what went out. And you can see that Hootsuite created a cute little short um, link and that was thanks to the little bookmarklet I touched on briefly. But then you also see the very important call to action of register here. I could have also said just click this link. Another neat part about Hootsuite is that you can search keywords. Um, you can search them in Hootsuite. You can also search them in each individual social media network if you wish. But I personally just search with Hootsuite. And what that does is it tells you what people are saying. So here's an example of what came up when I searched pest control in my Hootsuite app on my iPad. This is a screenshot of my iPad. I've got a whole bunch of stuff open in, in Hootsuite. Um, up in the red circle in that upper right-hand corner, I typed in pest control. And up popped a bunch of tweets and posts um, with pest control in it or referring to pest control or that had the hashtag pest control in them. And I noticed one from a friend of mine, and it was a post about bed bugs. He had all the necessary elements in his post, and the link that was in his post, I clicked on it, and it led to a recent blog post on the company website. So this is an example of how you can effectively drive traffic to your website or blog using links in your social media messages. Lastly, for my portion today, I'd like to touch on ads or advertising with or through social media networks. This is just a little screenshot I grabbed um, on Facebook, and it's really quite simple. It actually walks you through step by step um, to create an ad. Again, you do not need to be an IT expert or an advertising expert. You just need to know your target market and follow the simple instructions each site provides. These are two little screenshots from Twitter. You just go to twitter.com, and you can start advertising today 
as one of these shots um, states. And then also there's like a little Twitter university so you can learn about the tools and how to use them. So you may have heard of Facebook ads, and I just briefly mentioned them, but what, what does the ad actually look like? This is a, a grab from my Facebook page or my Facebook timeline. That happens to be Richard the chicken, uh, rooster technically, and he lives at the six-toed cat down in Key West, and that's where I was last weekend. So I snapped a picture of Richard and my morning coffee, and I posted it. I used Instagram, which is another, another uh, social media network for, for photographs. Um, I posted it to my Facebook page from Instagram. And what's funny is uh, when I looked to get a screen grab of some ads for you for this webinar, a little Hootsuite ad was on the side of my page. So this is, this is what the little ads look like. This one says, Try Hootsuite Pro Free. So they're trying to entice me to step it up, but technically I'm going to stay with the, uh, the basic free version. But that's what an ad looks like. They're very short, they're to the point, and they run down the sides of people's Facebook timelines. Now have you ever wondered why certain ads show up on the side of your Facebook wall? It's very simple. The person who created the ad followed step-by-step -step instructions in creating the ad and chose certain criteria to target a certain type of Facebook user. In this case, it was you. Now, the criteria range from zip codes to gender to many other factors that narrow down to that sweet spot, that target market that you want to reach. It takes just a short amount of time to get to the target market. And then you decide either how long you want to run the ad or how much you want to spend while running it. So an example is an ad, an ad ran for 30 days and with a total spend of approximately $200. But during that 30 days, over 450 people actually clicked the ad and gave the company that ran their ad their contact information, their email, et cetera. Now, what is significant about this is that this is real interest and desire on the part of that potential customer. So that's what's really neat, and I hope that I'm helping you all to see that the point of social media is truly engaging. It's, it's a two-way conversation. It's not just one way. And that's what's really special about these, these uh, Facebook and Twitter ads. So I'm very excited about using social media, and I hope that you are too. And we could chat all day, but my time is nearing an end, and I'd like to introduce a very special guest speaker that we have today. Coming up next is Erica Cardenas. She's the Marketing Coordinator for Control Solutions, and she's going to share with you um, how CSI uses um, social media as part of their marketing efforts. So I'll turn it over to you now, Erica. Thank you, Marie. Uh, hello, my name is Erica Cardenas, and I am the Marketing Coordinator for Control Solutions Incorporated. As the Marketing Coordinator, I tweet here. I post here, and I also manage several other social media platforms for our company. Uh, we have a LinkedIn account. Uh, we also have a Pinterest account, and I've just started an Instagram account for uh, CSI. Managing social media for numerous businesses and brands does take a lot of time, uh, technology, and people to be successful. CSI has been fortunate enough to have all three. 
we are able to manage several of these accounts through a web-based platform called Vocus, which I'll talk a little bit more about in just a moment. At CSI, we use social media in several different ways. Uh, one way we use it is to connect with our customers. Uh, we post new items of interest like label additions. Maybe we have an amendment to a label that we'd like to share with our customers. We have current product promotions. Uh, we also post press releases uh, for new hires and new products or promotions. Um, we also like to post about industry news, uh, you know, different articles about insects and, and stuff like that. Uh, we also gather feedback from our customers. We make exciting announcements uh, about maybe an upcoming trade show that we're going to be attending, uh, like we have uh, Pest World coming up in October in Arizona. We also uh, post announcements about new employees, and we also have interesting information about uh, like a brown gray key, brown gray, breaking ground on our new uh, warehouse that we're currently building. Here is an example of our recent ground breaking announcement on Facebook. You can see I have several other posts as well. I've posted about this particular webinar. I introduced a new product. And I also introduced a product promotion. Similar to Hootsuite, we use a platform called Vocus. It's a software that manages our flow of our posts, tweets, press releases, media coverage, and etc. Below is what the dashboard looks like for Vocus. Creating a press release is very easy to do since Vocus provides a template, as shown below, for us to use. The template gives editorial guidelines on how to create a successful press release and even has boxes for you to upload pictures, quotes, and relevant files. Vocus also offers email templates. I've also shown those below for creating eBlast, and this platform is also very, very easy to use. When I have information I want to share on all of our social media accounts, I can post to all three at the same time using the Vocus software. This is very similar to the Hootsuite. I can even schedule what day and what time I want the post to go out to our followers. The Vocus software has been a great tool for our company. Being able to manage press releases eBlast and social media posts through one pl platform has helped me minimize the amount of time that I spend and makes me more efficient while keeping our customers informed. Having the ability to schedule these tasks has also made it easy for the times I have to be out of town, at the, at, out of the office at a trade show, or even on vacation. Social media is a relatively simple way to reach to customers, and it doesn't have to cost much besides a little organization and time. This concludes my, por my portion, and I'll be turning it back to Marie. Thank you for letting me share what I do with all of you. All right. I think we might have okay. um, we jumped have to, to another slide. Oh, did we? Or did I advance it? See, this is the fun of technology, isn't it? <laughs> 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 so, 
this is the slide I was going to push to the audience. I'm not sure what's pushing over. Are we all seeing a thank you slide? Yes. All right. Thank you, Erica, and to all the participants today. We understand your time is very valuable, and we are grateful that you spent this time with us. So be sure to check us out at controlsolutionsinc.com. My info is below, and I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. We have got time for um, lots of questions here, so I'll shoot some of those your way. Uh, you, between the two of you, you can decide who will be answering. Um, we'll start with this one. It's a pretty general. Are social media starting to preempt websites? It seems like that with Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, that may be the case. All right. Um, it's Marie. I'll take it. You know what? It does seem like that's the case. But I think in reality, you can use social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc., to to drive traffic to your website. Social media networks are great ways to share. Um, but you know, your website can offer so much more versatility and also housing for a lot of content that um, you know more than just social media can. So I think that they all actually work together, and I believe that social media is just a wonderful way to drive more traffic to your site because your site just you can share so much more than what you do with the small amounts. Um, of information you put out through social media. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, I think that's good. And what is the best way to purchase advertising on Facebook? Oh, I love this. Um, purchasing advertising on Facebook is pretty simple. Uh, we mentioned it briefly. There's even a, tu a tutorial and there's step-by-step instructions to guide you through. I think probably the biggest decision that you may have to make is either deciding how long, like how many days you want to run an ad, or deciding on a total spend. So you can kind of frame it up one of those two ways. And Erica, feel free to chime in um, if I say anything that's out of the realm, because I think we've bought some ads on Facebook through the company. But the difference is if you decide on a total spend of, say, $100, I'll just throw that out there. Once the $100 is used up by the clicks on the ad, then the ad no longer appears, which that isn't a terrible thing. The $100 could last you a month, could last you a week. You never know. Um, it's not bad if it only lasted a week, in my opinion, because the people clicking on the ad are actively doing so, meaning you know, they're really interested in what you're offering, so they're clicking on your Facebook ad. And there's actually a couple tips I could share that a company recently shared with me that even if folks did not click on the ad, as long as they saw it, that is, a, is a, an added impression, if you will, in their mind. So you might want to think about putting your phone number or your logo um, in that Facebook ad so that at least they're seeing your logo over and over again, even if they're not clicking through, or your phone number over and over again. They, they may even write the phone number down but, but not click. Another thing that comes to mind talking about Facebook ads is testing ads. So you could take that $100 that say you've committed to spend, and you can make multiple ads that will feed off of that $100. So uh, Facebook has analytics. Basically, it's just statistics to show you, and it's very simple. You just, you know, a couple clicks and you're there. It shows you how effective your ad is. So you might have ad A and ad B, and you want to test them in your local market that you work in. So you put both ads up, and then the clicks are what cost the money, and it just starts taking down from that $100. And one of them might outperform, one of those ads might outperform the other one. And you can use the analytics tool on Facebook to see which one's performing better. And then just remove the one that's not performing as well and use just the one that is. So hopefully that makes some sense and I've answered the question. Um, but yeah, Facebook advertising and advertising on Twitter, that's a, that's a really fun uh, and interesting topic. 
Okay, we've got somebody who asks, um, they say that we started with Facebook years ago, and it's still a personal account that they're using. Would it be beneficial to convert it to a Facebook page? And related to that, how can you get more likes on your page? Okay, this is good. Um, so first we'll tackle the – we have a personal – Facebook timeline, and we want a Facebook page for business. Mm -hmm. I would, um, there really isn't a conversion that happens. You just have to, um, you just have to create the Facebook page for the business. So you just start from there. Just create it. It's better just to keep it separate anyway, uh, especially, you know, if you have that personal one and you've been using it for some business, it's better to, to make them separate. So keep your personal one personal and keep your Facebook page business. Now, right, how do you I get more likes? Um, oh, Erica, were you chiming in? Yeah, I wanted to, to add to that. Um, when you do set up a Facebook page, you will have to use your personal account to update that page. So you do have to keep it separate. So whenever you're updating a company page, you're actually updating that page through your personal Facebook. But it, nothing posts on your personal. It just for some reason makes you use your personal account for that company page. So would you then say, you know, make a, make a personal page or like for the business and then or just if you own the company or, you know, and you have yes, a personal page, just use that? Yes, to you're set up the who, Facebook page. If you're going to set up a company account, you will have to set up a personal Facebook page as well. Um, okay. And it's, I would do that first. Set up your personal account first, and then set up your page because it, it's going to make you link those accounts. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to touch on how do you get more likes on that business Facebook page? Um, sure. Uh, basically, it's all about content. I mean, if you have to drive your customers, you know, maybe it's a promotion that you're, you have going.